2019 Mountain Dew GSL Season 3 Codex Reversal Shout outs to Mountain Dew. Shout outs to mirror matchups. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mirror matchups. You're the greatest. Uh, Deer versus Zest going at it next. Yeah. Uh, you know, Deer has had some very on games. Uh, more recently, he's, he's had such a weird career, how, right? How he we popped on the this, scene, uh... was so strong, then he fell off for a while, but and then he got like a bunch of round of eights in a row, but didn't do much. And then he lost a whole bunch in like the round of 32 to people attacking him with one cyclone. And then like yeah. he started to do well again. Uh, I actually, I felt like, I believe it was season one. He was one of my picks to win the tournament because he was playing so well. And then Maru beat him like 3-1, but it was a good series. Yeah. If, I, if I'm if i recalling this correctly. I don't know. He's he's a little it's bit all over the place. Out of all the results we've had for all the players, he, he, I have to say there's, it's weird. Because, you know, Deer was a Royal Rotor. Winning a GSL, okay, out of nowhere, dominated. And usually when you see that, you say, okay, we might now have the new best player of all time for a while, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but then he's been so inconsistent. He's brought some of the most impressive games and then some of the most disappointing games. And I I don't know if we're ever going to get the full story of, you know, what's going on in his life or how much time he has to practice or, or what type of game really matches or molds to his mind well. Mm -hmm. But... I never know what to expect with Deer. Sometimes yeah. he just kills it. He comes out and wins easily. Other times, uh, he's a bit of a disappointment. Yeah. yeah. Zest, uh, uh, you know, he has been uh, on top of the world in, as, as Protoss in the past. Both these guys having incredible uh, histories here. But right now, they're not on top of Protoss. So I don't know what to expect here. But we're going to find out soon because game one what? is ready. Newbie, Deer. Ocean Gaming, Zest. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it is hard to figure out what, what this is going to look like. Because Zest is a, a little bit off and on as well. He's had kind of a rough he couple seems, of years. Because there yeah. was a long time where he was the best Protoss in the world. And yeah. then he's he's had some interviews, like some of those, uh, you know, like the, not the Signature Series videos, which were wonderful, but the uh, Pyeongchang video, remember? Oh, he, right. Because yeah. he was one of the two Koreans that qualified with that with SOS. And he was talking about how... You know, after the teams dissolve, he's kind of been lazy. He needs to pick that up, and then he started having better results, but it hasn't carried. And yeah. He hasn't. He hasn't. He hasn't really had the results that we were very used to from him before. I remember he was so powerful for a little bit as Protoss. Yeah. That remember trust. Trust started to become one of the best Protosses in the world when he was on the same team as Zest. Like, he started showing great results suddenly. Yeah, yeah. And he was just, like, mini Zest. But And that was, like, I feel like the peak of Zest power. Well, some players operate much better in team environments, and other players can be total free agents and, and actually thrive better without having a coach or a team. <laughs> and, oh, my God. That was... Oh, my God. That was a super high-tech move because there's a little bit of... Uh, randomization in the attacks. Yeah. So they were attacking each other, and then Deer saw that his was taking damage just a, like a less than a half second before Zess. So he waited till after an attack, pulled it away, and then redid it, redid the attack, and he happened to get it first that yeah. time. Yeah. Bam. Kills the probe. That pylon is garbage. Yeah. I mean, talk about... Among the things we almost never see at the start of a pro game, that is one of them. Yes. <laughs> like, that's... It's such a big map, too, and it's like, nope, here we are. Yeah. Found you. Peekaboo. <laughs> Spots it, kills the probe, and now that is just a building in the middle of the map. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you could use it as a warping, perhaps. Doesn't see the Stargate, so, I mean, I guess that's good. But uh, what Deer is doing is very solid. He's just making Stalkers in a Nexus, and that feels completely safe. I can't even yeah. imagine what could no, be no, happening where I, that's not. I think not. there's no exploits here. Yeah, I think you're right. But Zest throws down his Nexus not too far afterwards, so I think everything is is uh, 
fine overall. Like, Zest is a little bit behind, but it's not an unlayable position. Okay, continuing to deny the Shades from coming in there and getting any scouting off. Mm -hmm. uh, and here comes that Hallucinated Phoenix. It's going to come through here and see that, in fact, it is going to be a Stargate. But I like where Deer is taking this game. Oh, no shield battery in the main base. And his Stalkers are all at the natural. Uh -oh. Why? Okay. Oh, that's really smart. Now he can actually shade up. Oh, no, not yeah, that smart, Yeah, but he's going to lose it? the... Oh, man. Well, it was a cool idea, the right? Oracle. Yeah. Unfortunately, ideas are not enough. Yeah. Uh, execution is key. And I'll tell you something. To lose that Oracle and only get one probe? Yeah. Yikes. Close is only good in horseshoes and hand grenades, Tasteless. And uh, here comes the second Oracle now. It bounces off the defenses of Deer. Uh, Zest expansion is just finished. We don't have uh, probes quite transferred there yet. Deer just it. has momentum. Yeah, he has a lot of stalkers right now. Like quite a few. I believe he has like seven stalkers. Uh, so, you know, it's it's a pretty strong army that he's been making. Uh, Zest is getting into his own robo and his own twilight. Brings up his four adepts. I feel like the only thing he can do right now is slow Deer from doing other things. There's no real way to get damage. Whoa. Okay. Okay. I did not expect him to actually come in here. He does target down the two sentries. Not bad. Yeah. That puts Protoss in a situation where they're either going to remake those sentries or tech without them. And two oracles come in here. Oh, he's trying oh, so hard to make something God. happen. Oh, that's uh, crazy. That. Wow. You okay. know what? For those for those adepts, two sentries and five probes right now, I think that that was actually quite good because that brings the economies in line. And obviously, sentries gaining energy, you're going to have a really hard time against that. They're, they're very strong early on. We have um, Zest now going for Glaives here. So we're going to have a timing attack coming here from Zest very pretty cool. soon. A lot yeah. of gateways getting thrown down. Note the location of the gateways so that a hallucinated Phoenix, for instance, would not be able yeah. to scout this. Yeah. And usually... You could just, if you can see their gateways, I can't believe that's just barely out of vision. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, you know, if, if you can see their gateways, then you know, okay, when when mm -hmm. the attack's going to be coming here. Um, now, we'll have to see if Deer's going to be ready for this anyways, but I, I like the direction that Zess has taken this game, considering the way it started out. Yeah. Definitely agree with you on that. This is going to be a very scary attack coming in. You know, you don't have the sentries for the Guardian Shield or anything either. It looks like he's getting into charge and plus one. He's making a prism. Thing is, all this is going to be a little bit late. I don't think that Deer has uh, sufficient defense against like a massive glaive all in right now. Yeah, this might completely blindside Deer. And I think something yeah. this drastic is absolutely necessary considering the way that this game went for Zest. I think mm -hmm. if he tried to play straight up or tried to match Deer in what Deer's doing, he's just playing a losing game. It's kind of cool, too, that he lost his four adepts. Because sometimes when you see the adepts sitting around, it kind of... Yeah, then you think, wait a minute, is there going to be an adept yeah. all in here? But is when he you being lose extra the board, careful with those four adepts that don't scale that well? Do you want to use glaives later on? Is that Maybe. it? Maybe. Suiciding them in there. Uh-oh. Oh. Well, well, now he knows. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> and now he sees that they have glaives as well. So nothing is secret. He needs to cancel that nexus and just turtle up for a moment. Yeah, for sure. Is he going to let the Nexus just finish? Well, he'd have to be pretty huh. confident if Look he were that. to do that. He's but... going across with an Archon drop. Like, I mean, there's no way, right? You need those Archons at home. Yeah, he has, oh, dude, he has, like, nothing back yeah. here. Okay, uh, just we got have some stalkers. stalkers coming down, but these force fields are going to make uh, this fight much easier here. And he re okay, yeah, he definitely needed that back here. Yeah, He's yeah. got the Archons here. It would have helped out a lot had these also been over here to help out in defense. Yeah. The Adepts are definitely doing some work. Uh, those Archons getting very low. The shield batteries have already been used up. He's juggling them as best he can, but Zest is just crushing through. I'm, yeah, I'm a little bit confused that the, the way that he's done this. Wow. Like, the thing is, the, oh, the Adepts can... came up from a funny angle, attacked a pylon, and you can see the graphical difference when they have glaives, right? right? So, like, people don't get glaives off, like, three gates and then, you know, take a third base. That's not how it goes. So, I'm, yeah, it's kind of a weird 
a lack of reaction from Deere. He's like, yeah, I'll take a third base and go harass my Archons. Yeah, I'm surprised when he saw all these adepts coming from that side that he would actually try to send a War Prism across the map. GG. Yeah. Like, There's a lot of things that uh, don't compute for me. That, that was like Deere, Deere was playing a completely different game or something, a different opponent? I, I don't understand. Yeah. When you see Adepts coming out at that point in time, you go, okay, he's actually engineered an entire strategy that is intended to kill me right now, so my job is to actually just stop this. Yeah, generally, if I stop this, I will outpace them, I will be in a better position uh, after the attack is held. So the idea that he would send two Archons, which are like the strongest things he has, yes. and the War Prism, Absolutely. which is the greatest thing in all RGS games ever. And he lets... Uh, it, Pylons and uh, Nexus finish at his third base. Yeah. Like, the thing is, when you see that, if you cancel all that, add like three shield batteries to your natural and have your Archons and Prism there, well, maybe you hold. with all those stalkers, I think you, for sure you do hold. Yeah. It, the thing is, Zest was having that hinge on the fact that it was very hard to scout. And yeah. then he, I feel like Deer had enough time to react and he didn't do it. Huh. I'm okay. trying to think of what I could be missing here, but... I don't know, man. We're going to go to Thunderbird here for game two. Let's see if Deer can turn this one around. Newbie, Deer. Ocean Gaming, Zest. Which ocean, though? Does he make hurricanes or typhoons? Ooh, that's a good question. Maybe he's all the oceans. Just the world ocean? Mm -hmm. The one and only. Maybe another planet's ocean? Huh. Another planet's ocean. Can you name another planet with an ocean? Uh, no. Okay. Even though I'm a StarCraft commentator and our game is set in outer space, I cannot. <laughs> it looks like I've exposed myself uh, as a fraud here. Hold on, I know the names. People. There's a, a planet called Char. There's a planet called um, Chikurus. Ire. Ire. Tarsonis. Oh, you're faster than me. I'm trying to... Marsara? Marsara is a... Yeah. Right? That's a planet. Uh, Earth is in the StarCraft storyline. That's also That's a planet. That's true. Yeah, that yeah. is what we already... We already went over that one. Um... Now that's all the planets. That's all the planets in StarCraft. I think there's a couple more. There's probably one where, like, Amon lives or something. I don't know. You ever find it weird that in science fiction they're like, well, this is a lava planet, and this is a snow planet. You're like, can a planet just have, like, also all the weather conditions? It's like... But that's more rare. Yeah. To have all... Because you have to be, like, the right distance from the sun, right? You have to be the or perfect distance. from the star that you're at. Because yeah. the only one that's actually the sun is our, our star. That's right. That's why it's called the solar system. Nice. Uh, we have a proxy Stargate, by the way. Versus a proxy Robo. Yeah. Hmm. So um, the proxy Robo is going to pack a lot of punch here uh, as the game starts up. Do you think it's going to be three gate or? Well, it, it'll be three gate, but do you think he's going to get an immortal? Is yeah, my question. I think so. It, it, one immortal. Yeah. I think it's going to be okay. the one immortal push with the yeah. War Prism, and he just powers up the ramp and, and, and crushes him. You know, it, it's a very strong build. I actually like the Immortalless one a little bit more, I oh, think. Oh, do you think it's, well, you think it's, it's better? Or? It hits really quickly. It's so microable, you know. I feel like it, it, the Immortal takes a little bit to build. It's the same building, right? It's like, does that add that much more of a punch? If you have the Prism, you win basically every battle early on. Wow, he just missed that. Uh -huh. Makes that, that uh, immortal as you predicted, though. Yeah, it's coming out. The thing is, the a lot of punch from that. Yeah, the immortal, it, it just has so much sustainability mm -hmm. in a fight. I mean, Dude, I think, you know, the immortal is just, as every year passes in StarCraft 2, it looks like a better and better unit, you yeah, know? <laughs> and it's it's been nerfed. Yeah. Before, for sure. Um. I think when they were making the Immortal, they thought, okay, well, this is going to be very specific to stop certain things. And in fact, it's like, no, it's actually pretty good against basically everything. So mm -hmm. it's hard to find a reason to not get this. Okay, oh, this so is hilarious. Yeah. Well, that pylon did not buy that God. much time, did it, Artosis? Immediately, he's going to target right. down the shield battery. And, uh, you know, when Phoenix is here, it's like, yeah, you can pick this up. 
Um, but I don't think this is going to be ever fast enough to curb the damage that's coming out here. We have Adepts coming back. Yeah. But the Warp Prism's already across the map. Now, he's being pretty smart here. He's keeping this out of the vision of the Phoenixes. He wants to get a quick warping around of more Stalkers before he actually reveals the location of this. So here's that first Stalker coming in now. Yeah, the Phoenixes are trying to do as much as they possibly can. Now you realize that there is a Prism in his main base. I feel like knocking that out might be... Okay, this it's is quite dead though. I think. Yeah, this was Deer just getting getting rolled here. To be honest, man, he got crushed. Uh, more warpins are coming in. It's just now. I think the Phoenix is. Well, I guess they're never going to go for the warp prism there. There's just uh, so many stalkers out now. The immortal still at about half health. Uh, probes are being sacrificed just to buy enough time to get a few stalkers in. But what will they really be able to defend? You know. Yeah. There's really nothing left here. Uh, okay, not looks a lot like of money either. Moral victory there, killing the immortal, but mm -hmm. beyond that, uh, yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> I don't, like know, don't know what else. Moral victory, killing the immortal. Okay. Uh, Zest wins that easily. Yeah, kind of smashes through. Yeah. So what's the winner match? Ragnarok and Zest. Huh. What was the winner match last time? I don't know. Solar and Rogue? <laughs> wow. Just wow. Saying, just saying. Now, uh, we're going to go to a short break here, uh, but we are already about to hop into the winner's match here. Uh, it's either going to be Ragnarok or Zest moving on uh, in one of the final two spots in the round of eight. Dear, I am worried for this guy in this group, man. Yeah. He is not looking, uh, yeah. uh, not looking like he's going to last. Uh, we're going to go to that commercial now. We'll be right back, everyone.